Hey there, happy December. This is a website that I discovered in 2018, I think it was, um, in the middle of 2018. And what it does is give you uh, 20, no, not 25, 50 challenges every day, so, uh, every day, sorry, two a day. Um, and it's called the Advent of Code and um, they have these challenges. So uh, it's on the Advent of Code. You can sign in using GitHub or Twitter and it just kind of tracks your progress for you. Um, and what I think it's really good for is learning how a particular programming language works. Um, it gives you kind of a mini challenge to do, really good for kind of breaking away from work and just kind of getting your brain into a different gear to, it also like kind of oiling the engine a little little bit. Um, so this was last year um, and uh, I, uh, I don't think my answers are in here anymore. Yeah, so this was last year and um, I was working my way through, I think I got to day 16 um, and uh, I was kind of doing it a few days behind and it was, it gets more and more complicated as you go on. The first couple of days kind of ease you in. Um, and I chose to do it using a language called JQ, which is a JSON manipulation tool for kind of data science. It's not really a programming language. Uh, it's more of a transformation like languagey thing. Um, but it helped me kind of really understand what JQ can do and how I could kind of like bend it to do things it shouldn't be able to do. Um, so I, uh, I'm coming back to this this year. Um, my plan is to um, do it using JQ again, because I quite like using JQ as a, a practice tool. Um, and I've been learning uh, Z80 assembly kind of just for fun, for whatever that can mean. So I'm going to try and um, solve these using uh, assembly as well. And um, the thing about it is that I also tend to like use JavaScript as my scratch pad. So uh, where I might kind of use pencil and paper to solve certain things, um, I use JavaScript because I know it very well to solve problems ahead of time as like a prototype. And then I kind of transform it into the language I need to, so uh, to, to actually do it in. Um, and I was going to kind of encourage you to uh, maybe use a language that you want to learn more about to try and solve these problems, or maybe take a language that you don't think is um, is possible. So, you know, maybe you can solve these using CSS. I doubt it, but I'd love to be proven wrong. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. Um, there's uh, a story that kind of goes through the, the 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 24 or 25 days. I can't remember how many days it is. Um, uh, 25 days. So you've got to collect these stars. You get one star for every uh, puzzle that you solve and you have two puzzles a day. Um, and the way that I approach these is um, to kind of look at the problem. Um, it always gives you a small kind of sample set to work from um, and try and work from that sample set to start off with and then take the full input which looks like this, um, and kind of run it through uh, the code. And put your answer in, you then get the next puzzle. So that's the the plan. Um, and what I'm going to do is just going to go straight into uh, solving this with, with uh, JavaScript. Uh, if you want to do this yourself, then feel free to stop the video now. Um, if not, keep on watching. I will be solving this in real time. And then in my own time, I'll be uh, doing JQ hopefully and then uh, Z80 if I can. I'm not completely convinced that I can do it and I, I'll go as far as I can with this as well. Like it takes t some of them, the more complicated they get, the longer it takes to do. Um, and like I said last year I got to day 16 and I just, I, I got stuck mostly because the processing power required to do the, the, the manipulation of data and JQ just it didn't, didn't work at all. Um, so yeah, stop the video now if you want to do it yourself and solve it yourself. Uh, keep watching if you want to see how I would approach this um, and learn a bit of JavaScript. So the actual puzzle here is um, right here. So um, this is supposed to be a, a timesheet and um, what we need to do is find the two values that add up to uh, 2020 and multiply those two numbers together. So it gives you a simple example in this list. The two entries that sum to 2020 are uh, 1721 and 
299. Multiplying those two numbers together, we get this value. So the correct answer is 514579. So um, I'm going to grab the, uh, the puzzle input. And I've got uh, kind of a working directory here. I'm going to drop this into my input file and save that. Um, and I'm going to do this in JavaScript now. I've got a, a really cool tool called uh, Quokka. Um, it's not my, I mean, I, I paid for it. Um, and uh, it lets me just kind of run JavaScript in VS Code and see the output. So I can do uh, const um, uh, read file equals require uh, fs.read file. In fact, I can, might as well make that sync. And I can do um, const file equals read. So the plan is to um, read the file in uh, UTF-8. Oh, that's, yeah, there you go. Uh, no such file. Brilliant start. Brilliant start. Um, read the file in. Um, and what I'm going to do is basically loop through, uh, take uh, break them into an array, um, take the first item, and then compare to every other item. Um, I'm not going to write any code to check that if I'm on the same line, but I can add that in. Um, and I want to do it in a for loop so that I can break out early rather than running through the whole lot. So um, you'll see what that looks like in a moment. Um, why doesn't this work? I think it's because it's running from the wrong directory. Let's just see if I can... There we go. Um, and nice thing about Quokka is I can do this little question mark and it'll tell me, it'll give me the content. So um, dot .split. Uh, new line, then I'm going to map it. Actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to map it to underscore parse int uh, underscore 10. And that should give me what I'm looking for. I just want to make sure I don't have, um, Oh yeah, there we go. So I've got uh, not a number there. So let's filter out the empty lines. Dot filter boolean. It's kind of a long way of doing it, but oh, yeah, actually that should do. That should probably do the trick. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just popping off the last one to check that I have a real number. If I shift off the first one. Um, I should have a number. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I got my numbers, um, and I'm going to do uh, const length equals file dot length, um, and I'm just going to loop through. Actually, I wonder if I can do a find. So can I do um, file dot find, and then I can do um, a loop inside of this. Uh, I equals uh, file dot length. I can do uh, n uh, m. That's a bad idea. If n plus m equals twenty twenty, oops, then return true. I think it is. Okay, uh, that didn't help because I only got one of the numbers. I need to know what the two numbers are. Um, I mean, a really fast way is to do uh, let alt number equals null, and then we can just do, so we're gonna get n back in uh, this result, uh, let a equals, and then b equals, or let a, b, and then we're gonna do uh, a equals, uh, not a great choice of variable names, So does that add up? I'm being stupid here. Um, just to check, A plus B equals 2020. Yeah, okay. There we go, so we found our two. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing a find and then the idea of a find is we get an early, ex early exit and then we're looping through each one. I suspect this would go wrong if there's um, the number 1010 in there um, because it would match on itself and then just jump straight out. Uh, I guess we could avoid that by doing uh, this. Um, 
j and then if i equals j return false yeah that should do it and i, I can check that by sticking in uh, 110 1010 there and yeah that didn't work and we comment that out yeah okay so that, that's where our false negative is false positive rather um okay so we have our two numbers um and i'm just gonna console.log uh, a times b that's our result so pop that in there submit Right answer, one gold star. So, part two. So part two means that the code that we were, we used before isn't really going to work. Um, so part two says that we need to find three numbers that together make uh, 2020. So we need to think about this slightly differently. We can't just loop around and add the numbers up. So I guess what we're going to have to do, or well, one simplistic approach is to take the first number then add on the second number, and if that is less than 2020, go through all the other numbers until we hit 2020. If we don't, move to the next number. So we have um, uh, an outer loop that goes through the, the first number, a second loop that goes through the second number, a third number that goes through the third number. Um, so let's duplicate this file. And I basically organize it as kind of one A, one B, and then have the input. Um, I should probably move the input to the other directory, the higher directory, so because they're all going to use that. Um, yeah, so that's not going to work. Just moving files around. Okay, so um, we have the the slurp, I guess. Um, so what we're going to do here is, um, oh, let's see. So I, I want a, I want a loop that is going to break. So um, this can be my a value. Oops, I forgot to. So I'm just going to hit F2. Nope. Uh, file. And um, that's going to be the a value. If a is greater than 2020, and in fact, actually uh, greater than 2018, because if it's 2019, then we can't do anything with it. I very much doubt if any of them are bigger, but it's worth putting in there. Continue, so we're gonna skip, and now we're going to do uh, uh, const subset one equals file dot slice, um, and we're going to start at one. We're going to do that. We should be able to do that. We should be able to just keep moving forward. Because if, we, if we're halfway through the file, we don't need to go back through the beginning numbers because we would have already done that. I'm just going to take this approach to start off with and see how we go. So my approach here is that I'm kind of whistling down the list that we're working through. So... Um, I J is a uh, subset going to work its way through subset one um, and this is B and if uh, A plus B is greater than 2020 oops then continue oops and then finally run through this subset J K. Let's rename this to K. Uh, so that was F two, and um, const subset two equals sub. Oh, I call that sub sub. That's wrong, isn't it? So this is going to be subset subset one dot slice one. So we just skip the first one, 
Um, and this is going to be C and uh, subset two. Oh my god, my variables are getting all messed up. Subset, Christ. Um, if A plus B plus C equals that, if A plus, well, actually, we can just. Oh, uh, what are we going to do? We need some kind of like let found equals false. Found equals true. And then we need to do kind of a break. If found break. And on the outer loop. And we need to somehow capture all of those variables. So let's do a const res equals an array. I'm just going to dump them all into there. Um, so we're going to do uh, res.push abc. Right. Um, so I think we've got Quokka starting on the wrong file. Let's stop Quokka and start again. And let's have a look at um, res. Oh, so I've got a syntax error somewhere. So pretty was telling me I had a syntax error. Uh, oh, uh, there we go. Um, right, so let's also have a look at, um, at res.reduce ack cur ack plus equals cur. Oh yeah, that seemed to work. I mean, I've got the numbers 2020. Um, I'm not completely convinced that this uh, slicing is right. I th it feels right, but I haven't thought it fully through. Um, this is telling me that this is never happening. So yeah, we don't have any numbers bigger than 2018. Um, but let's just dump that out into the console. Um, res. Oh, we've got to multiply apply them together, haven't we? Um, so let's do. Uh, times equals nope is that right wait so hang on res is that and we do yeah that's fine I think there was oh if you don't pass that in it will just multiply the first value yeah was that the same yeah it was um, so uh, reduce JavaScript to reduce. There's two ways of calling it. If you call it with no initializer, so this value here, um, it uses the first element in the array, uh, which is 72. So we're just going to multiply those those three numbers together. Um, so let's log this one out. Console.log, and let's take that value. Let's stick it in there. Submit. Yay! Cool. So that's day one and two stars completed. So um, what did we do? We looked at um, reading files, splitting it. I'm using filter and the result from the trim as kind of a Boolean. Um, here, so if the, the trim results in an empty string, uh, it gets filtered out. Um, I'm then parsing uh, each one of the lines as a, a, a decimal value, so these become numbers. Um, and in here, I'm using the array.find, which will uh, loop through until you have a truthy value returned, and it will break at that point. Um, and I'm just doing this kind of like double, this extra loop inside. Um, Realistically, they probably should have looked very similar. Um, but you can see how I took the, the simpler route the first time round. Um, and here in the second one, I'm doing the same kind of initialization, uh, but I'm using uh, three nested loops um, and using continue to say, um, don't run this code and just kind of go back to the next, next item in the list. Um, and break says to exit out of the current loop. So that's why I need to um, uh, do this found. In fact, I can probably get rid of the found and just do uh, res.length, res.length. There we go. So I don't need this found variable anymore. Um, yeah, and so break, like I said, break only breaks the current loop. So because we've got three 
three loops, we're breaking up all, all three. And this tool is called Quokka. Um, I think there is a free trial that you can you can get. Um, highly recommend it. It's really good for kind of scratch code and prototypes. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. And uh, if I have time, I will do one of these every day. Bye-bye.